welcome everybody. Thank you so much for coming out. I'm Liza Fromer. We're here to celebrate John. Where does the inspiration come from? Does it still come from music? Does think, it come from family? Yeah, I think I think well, I think it does come from music. Ultimately, you know, I think you've got to believe, um, or I've got to believe, in the power of music. I mean, music, you know, gave me an identity. You know, it, 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 it um, you know, without it, I, I just, I don't know what I, I don't know what I would have done. So I'm a bit of a, I'm a. Uh, I'm an apostle, you know, and I uh, and I, I'm a believer. I think that music. I mean, my mother. I got her to blame. I realised that, you know, in my family, you know, pop stars were more important than politicians. No, no, nobody talked about politicians. No one was interested in politics in my house. But get my mom started on Rod Stewart's haircut, <laughs> or Brian Ferry's latest single, and she could get really excited about that. Well, you know, cut to. Frankly, I'm, you know, I'm trying to get in, I'm trying to get excited in the elections. But I'm just a little bit more interested in the um, the Roxy Music box set or, what, or whatever it, it is. No, I mean, I, and I think one of the reasons is I know what it's like to be a fan, and I wanted to put that in the book. I wanted to give that up because you know so many people have given to us, you know, and, and, and created those, you know, really exciting moments. Exactly. There's um, always got to be someone that inspires. Yeah, I think someone that, else. Yeah, 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 and it's still there, you know, and it's still, it's still like. You know, for me, keeping the fire, keeping the flames burning, keeping the fire burning, that's, that's what it's all about, you know, because when you, you know, we're going to go back in the studio in, in the spring. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, with, with Mark Ronson again. And, uh, you know, you kind of, that became a bit of a theme, actually, and it's one of the, it's one of the chapters in the book. You talk about that, about being a side man, and, and you know, you think about rock stars and they're out there and big personalities but yeah. that doesn't sound like necessarily you wanted to recede a little bit well i i just couldn't quite make that leap in my in my own imagination to put myself at the front of the stage with a microphone stand i just couldn't do that and and you know and most singers like whether it's simon or timberlake you know they at least they were at least in the choir at school you know what i mean they've at least sung publicly i never did that you know but 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 i wanted to be a part of that that thing, that production, you know, when I started to go to see bands, um, you know, I just, I would just marvel at this, I mean, everything about it, you know, um, the PA system, the lights, you know, the drum risers, everything, and I just believe, I also know, you know, that music is, you know, the power of music, it's the greatest antidepressants, I mean, you know, if you've got your music, if you've got your music lined up properly, you don't need, you don't need antidepressants, music can get you through everything. It's a very, very powerful form and it's worth investing a lot of time and energy in. Well, it's amazing, isn't it? There's almost nothing that, whether it's a smell or something you read, there's almost nothing that will inspire you as much as music, which I think is why we're all here, because I suspect that we're all the same, where your music was the soundtrack of all of our growing up. Yeah. Yeah. And so to this day, you know, as I'm reading your book and you're mentioning a song, every single lyric goes to yeah. it. Have uh, the other band members read it? Roger, Roger has read it, but Roger's really the only guy who reads uh, rock bios, and, and he loved it. And um, I, I took a copy of the book to Nick. This is what I did when I'm asked this question. I, I, I took the first hardback off the press to Nick because I felt he needed to have it. He'd already told me that he, he wasn't going to read it because he didn't want it to, he didn't want it to get in the way of his own memories, uh, particularly if he wanted to write his own book at one time. But I said, so here it is anyway, you don't have to read it, but here's one for the archive. So Nick goes, hmm, <laughs> smells good, doesn't it? Johnny. It's a good smelling book. <laughs> he then went on to comment on, oh, oh, I love that you use that picture. He went on to com comment about some of the pictures. But, but you know, it's, uh, these are the, they're the last people that should read the book. They were there and, and you know, they would, their perceptions of events would be so different to mine. You know, because, you know, you realize that, uh, you know, from the outside looking in, you probably think, we're so alike, you know. But we're all, we're so different, you know, I mean... Story unfolds. You talk a lot about being out on the road 
and the loneliness that came along with that, and the ways That's that you tried to different. solve that lonely problem. Yeah. <laughs> Whether you know, if you turn to drugs at yeah. one point, and you're very open about that. Where, where do you think that came from? When, with all the adulation again, it was it well, isolating? Yeah, I mean, exactly. I mean, again, I mean, part of the process of this book was trying to trying to understand that. Um, I mean, fame is very addictive. Also, talking about addictions, I mean, the kind of attention that you that you start getting when you when you're uh, you know at the centre of that kind of attention, that kind of energy, and um, I found it very hard to turn off from. Um, you know, I started drinking, I started drugging. I actually feel like the drugs helped me become the John Taylor that. You know, I, I needed to be. You know, I I, I, I watched a uh, um, an interview um, with me um, taken the week that Planet Earth came out, and um, I was watching it. And I thought this guy's never going to make it. He's so inside. He's so insular, confident, and clearly like you know believing in his band, but so painful. You know, in in, in, in yielding up answers to the question. But then, you know, six months later, I was on some. Tis was or some Saturday morning TV show like the life and soul of the party. Well, what was different? Well, you know, what was different was I started dipping into you know various you know drugs and and it just I I feel like uh, I don't know that that I could have become you know that um, that guy. I feel like I needed a bit of a help. Um, so you know, the drugs and alcohol kind of helped that. But then of course you know I couldn't control it. You know, then then it, it took control of me. Hi, John. Hi. Hi, John. Um, my question is, I've just started reading the book, and I'm astonished how good your memory is when you're very young. Because you, I can't tell you what my first day of school was like. And so I'm wondering, like, how is it that you're able to remember that? Right, well, there's two, I think there's, there's two answers to that. One is, you know, thank God for, like, uh, wiki, t wiki timeline and, you know, I mean, for the... Really, it's only the, mi the middle part of the book that deals with the first few years of the band, which is very much, you know, a calendar of, you know, events. I mean, it was important to get the timing right on that. And, and you know, you can go online, and I, I also, I had these boxes and boxes of, of memorabilia that I was actually able to check. I, I had all the old schedules and the itineraries that I, I could see. The first part of the book, it wasn't even that important, you know. It's not even that important to get specific dates, really. It's just, they're just impressions. Uh, I mean, the other thing is, you know, you know, if you can't remember the date exactly, kind of make it up, you know. <laughs> I mean, I, I, mean I, I feel that, like, the important thing is to give the sense of how things happen. You know, I'm not, I'm not that tied to specifics in that sense. For, you know, I was, for me, it was about trying to catch a spirit, you know. And, you know, and, and, and once I'd sort of, once I knew I wanted to go for this three-part thing, which was, like, be, growing up, beginning of the band, you know, and then, you know, working through, you know, becoming a grown-up, getting, you know, you know, dealing with my parents' death. I knew it was about, about getting the spirit of those, of those three ideas. More about that than get, about getting very definite dates. <laughs> um, I'm wondering about the process of writing. Was yeah. it was it painful? Was it therapeutic for you? And how long did it take you to, it was, to write the book? It was very painful, but fortunately the therapy was really good. Uh, no, it, there was, um, I think once I, once I committed to the idea of doing it, I really got into it. And, and there was one or two key scenes that I thought, if I can get those scenes right, I'll have, I'll have a, an interesting book. Um, one of them was the scene with Sting, for instance, when I'm a kid and I'm seeing the police play. That, that, that wasn't the kind of story that you're going to tell in a band interview. It would have just fallen flat and it would have been wasted. I, I, I held that story back, thinking one day I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to present that story just right. I mean, the, the night where I'm like really trashed, you know, it was a night like tonight, actually. It was a serious storm going on in New York City. And I'm in my 20, 27th floor apartment. And it's just one, it's one of those Quentin Tarantino nights, you know. It's like, you know, a little bit Scarface, you know, a really crazy night. But what do I do at 8 o'clock in the morning? Am I calling for hookers? No. I'm calling, I'm calling Father Cassidy. You know, because, because I'm, I'm calling my parish priest, who I haven't spoken to in three years, because that's where my head was at. That's how sick and twisted I was. And I thought, wow, that was such a crazy, crazy night. If I could 
If I could get that down on paper and communicate that, that could be a good scene. I haven't seen or read that before. So I, I got a few scenes like that, and they became the cornerstones of the book. And then I started working with Tom, Tom Sykes, who was just fantastic. And, um, and we would get together. He would come and stay with me at my house, and we had, a, we had the dining table, and he had his computer on one side, and I had mine on the other. And we would bounce things back and forth. It was, like, it was very much like working with a producer. I came to him with like the raw demos, which were my raw chapters, and then he would, he would produce them, say, we need... I think we need some backing vocals right here. You know, and maybe an orchestra. This one needs the orchestra. But, but, but it was a good, we had a good working relationship and we just kept the thing moving.